Hello, and welcome to our discussion of the distinctions between the word sex and the word gender. Before I begin, I want to make sure that if anybody has just found this video on YouTube and is not watching it as part of my course content, um, I'd like you to please check out the rest of the things that I've had to say about these topics before commenting on my videos. Okay, that's my, my little uh, editorial. All right. <clears throat> so if we distinguish between the word sex, which is a biological term, and the word gender, which is a socialized term, we see that there are different factors being included under those two headings. Biological sex is going to be determined by one's chromosomes, what type of gonads they have, what hormones predominate in their bloodstream, and what type of genitals they have. Gender, on the other hand, is going to refer more to um, internalized uh, self-awareness. It's going to include behaviors. It's going to include um, how a person is treated in the environment, um, things like that. So gender is much more um, reactive to uh, the environment and to upbringing and socialization, whereas biological sex is much more um, consistent across a person's lifespan. But when we talk about go um, hormones, you're gonna notice that that's not necessarily, that's one case where they can fluctuate. So I think it would be smart if we just go ahead and start talking about biological sex, and then um, later on we'll turn our attention to gender. So the development of biological sex. So we have our cute little mommy and daddy represented by the XY chromosome for the daddy and the XX chromosome for the mommy. Okay. Um, so our chromosomal sex is determined by which grouping of chromosomes a person has at the 23rd pair of chromosomes in the DNA. So we have um, one pair that could determine a male outcome, which is the XY pairing. And then we have the, the pairing that can produce the female outcome, which is the XX pairing. Now, when babies are produced, um, or I should say when sp um, sperm are produced, sperm come before babies. Okay. So when the sperm are produced, half of those sperm are going to contain the X chromosome from the male and half are going to contain the Y chromosome from the male. Now with the female, there are, are only X's, but they are in fact, in, in, you know, different entities. You've got two separate X's. One came from the female's mom and one came from the female's dad. Whereas for a male, the X chromosome came from the mom and the Y chromosome came from the dad. So the male has only received his mom's X chromosome. The female has received an X chromosome from mom and from dad. And that matters because that, those X chromosomes might be carrying um, different kinds of codes on them. Now, uh, when the X chromosome from the dad pairs up with one of the X chromosomes from the mom, you end up with an XX offspring. Uh, if the Y chromosome from the dad pairs up with that X from the mom, that produces an XY um, offspring. If both X's are paired, but now we're looking at the other X for the mom, we end up with a different potential XX combination. And then finally, that same X could now be paired with the Y and we could end up with a different XY pattern than we have in the previous on the left side. So what you see is really four possible outcomes of pairings of the X's and the Y's that the parents are carrying. All right, well, that's pretty basic. Um, now let's talk about some abnormalities that can occur at that 23rd pair of chromosomes. Um, I'm gonna talk about just the ones that have official names or at least um, common names. So I'm gonna start with Kleinfelter syndrome. And this is a disorder that occurs when there are two X chromosomes and one Y chromosome at the 23rd, what should have been a pair is now a triplet. So we have an XXY person. Um, so the presence of the Y chromosome is going to cause uh, male external genitalia. So you'll have a penis and testicles. In general, the testicles will be smaller after puberty than they would have been had there not been that second X chromosome. And then that second X chromosome is going to interfere with some of the uh, messages that the Y chromosome is trying to send out about beard growth and the potential for baldness and um, you know ha ha um, hair growing on the chest. Um, 
you know, the widening of the shoulders that typ typically happens at puberty. Um, so that second X chromosome is going to interfere with some of those messages coming from the Y chromosome. Um, generally, a person with Klinefelter syndrome is, uh, you know, difficult to distinguish until after puberty, because a lot of these changes occur from what we call the secondary sex characteristics. We're going to talk about that more in another chapter when we get to, um, you know, the issues of puberty and things when we talk about child and adolescent development. But just for right now, I'll just say that the outward characteristics that make a person look masculine or feminine from a distance are what we mean by secondary sex characteristics. And those things happen generally in response to the presence of a Y chromosome that'll cause masculinization. The absence of a Y chromosome maintains a more feminine appearance. Well, here we have a conflict between two X's instead of just one, and then the Y chromosome. And so we get this feminization of the, of the physical form. Now we get some other characteristics that go along with that. Um, there are some personality effects. Now it's not clear whether the chromosomes themselves are actually what are causing the personality outcomes, or if it's the way that the world has been treating the person that causes them to display um, greater timidity than you would expect generally, and they tend to be more withdrawn. And that might be a reaction to things that they've been um, you know, experiencing in the environment with people giving them feedback about their appearance. There is a higher rate of learning disability among people with Klinefelter syndrome. Um, that doesn't mean that they necessarily have a lower IQ. In fact, what it means is that they have an average IQ, but they have difficulty with at least one of the major um, skill sets that we acquire in school, um, reading or math. They're at least two grade levels behind. And so it doesn't mean that they have overall intelligence problems, but instead that they're having difficulty in either or both reading and math. And then because of the competing, um, you know, extra X and then the Y, um, generally people with Klinefelter syndrome experience infertility. They're, they are unable to father children. Now there's something on this picture that a lot of times my face-to-face -face students will ask me about. They'll say, what's a female type of pubic hair pattern? This little section right here. And so I went ahead and pulled a, an image that shows, you know, typical male pattern of pubic hair versus a female pattern. This isn't perfect. I mean, obviously people vary, but on average, females' pubic hair patterns look a little more triangular shaped, whereas males, it tends to go farther down the legs, farther up the abdomen. Um, and so you see a different pattern and the Klinefelter syndrome person tends to have a pattern that looks more female type. All right. Um, how about Superman syndrome? This is sort of the opposite of Klein's Klinefelter syndrome because here we have one X and two Ys. Um, this person happens to um, have been identified as having Superman syndrome, so that's why I used his photograph. Um, this is a disorder that um, oftentimes just sort of enhances masculinity, and so a lot of times it's not picked up as um, th that there's anything wrong, and you'll see why. For one thing, the personality, um, oftentimes this is a person who's very confident, like the flip of Klinefelter syndrome, right? They might be so confident that they're actually displaying what we call antisocial um, symptoms. So they may um, not follow the law. They might um, take advantage of people, things like that. Um, antisocial doesn't mean that they're withdrawn. That I would have meant with I would have written with withdrawn like I did with the Klinefelter syndrome if I had meant that. What I mean by this is those antisocial um, characteristics, those symptoms. Um, intelligence again, uh, we see some learning disabilities, and so again, normal levels of intelligence, but we have um, difficulty with either math or reading or both. And then with a person with Superman syndrome, they tend to be fertile. So you can imagine that a person who has this chromosomal pattern might not, might not ever know that they have it because there's really nothing that distinct, that distinctive that would make them want to look into anything. Um, a lot of times they're taller than average. They uh, may have more hair on their body than average. Um, they might have more oily skin than average. So there, there can be some signs that the person might have this, this abnormality, but because it's not harmful and it really might even be an enhancement, a lot of people don't know that they even have it. Uh, Turner syndrome is a disorder where there is one X chromosome and then nothing else. So it's an XO, we call it. So instead of having extra chromosomes, this is one where there's only one X and nothing else. So they're, they're operating on just the one chromosome at this pair. Um, so this is a sort of drawing of 
some of the stereotypical physical uh, effects that go along with having Turner syndrome. Um, it, it turns out that many um, miscarriages are attributable to Turner syndrome because they this disorder can cause really significant malformations that are inconsistent with life. And so you can end up with miscarriage or stillbirth. Um, if the person actually survives, they oftentimes will have very characteristic features on their face. They have a heart-shaped face. Um, they have hair that grows down lower on their neck. Um, they have webbing on their neck where it sort of looks like their neck didn't really, um, you know, emerge out of their shoulders. The biggest problem that we worry about are the, uh, the heart related problems where they have actual problems with their aortic form, the formation of their, their aorta, things like that. Um, and so those are the things that are actually the health related problems are the ones that have to do with the, with the heart. Um, a person with Turner syndrome, oftentimes they are, are very engaging and their personality is, is pretty typical, except for they have difficulty reading other people's emotions. And so they may um, seem insensitive to other people. Um, they also tend to display learning disabilities. So normal um, intelligence levels combined with, um, you know, being behind in reading or math. And then finally, we have infertility as a symptom. And you'll notice on the picture, it says that there are streak ovaries. Um, streak ovaries are where you have ovaries that look like they were starting to convert over from gonads, but never fully developed and uh, never fully distinguished themselves as ovaries that loaded up with eggs and stuff like that. So I thought just to illustrate this last type of um, abnormality, it would be useful for you guys to watch this video on Turner syndrome. It gives us a case that you can check out and we can come back and talk about the video after you have a second to watch it. So it'll load up next in the playlist.